The Moran scatter plot is a device, a graphic device, to visualize the magnitude of Moran's eye, as well as to decompose the spatial autocorrelation into different uh, parts that pertain to different types of spatial association. Formally, it's a very simple result. If we look closely at Moran's eye, it's a ratio of cross products in the numerator scaled by the number of non-zero elements in the weights matrix and a variance estimate in the denominator, um, usually in deviations from the mean. Now, as we've seen, when the weights, the spatial weights are row standardized, then the sum of all the weights in one row equals one, and there are as many rows as observations, so S0 equals N. And with S0 equal to N, the denominators in both parts of the ratio cancel each other out. So we end up with a much simpler expression, which is in the numerator the double sum of the cross products times the weights, and in the denominator the sum of squared uh, since z is in deviations from the mean, the sum of square deviations from the mean. And if we reshuffle this a little bit, we can move the sum over i out, which pertains to zi, and then the sum over j doesn't affect zi, so we can easily bracket that. Then we can think of this as two different terms. And think back of your textbook regression coefficient treatment in a bivariate regression. In a bivariate regression, if we have dependent variable y and explanatory variable x, the numerator is xy and the denominator is x squared. Here, if we take the sum over j of wi, j, cj, which is the spatially lagged form of that variable, as the dependent variable, and the z i as the explanatory variable, then it turns out algebraically that Moran's i equals the slope in that bivariate regression. So this is not what is typically thought of, which is the regression of the value at a location, which would be z i on its neighbors through the spatial lag, but it's the reverse. So the spatial lag is on the left-hand side of the equation, and the variable is on the right-hand side. And it's just a, a purely algebraic result, which is uh, very handy because it uh, allows us now to visualize the, va the magnitude of Moran psi. And we do this in what I call a Moran scatter plot, which is simply a scatter plot with the values typically standardized on the x-axis and a spatial lag on the y-axis. So um, this is a scatter plot like any other scatter plot with all the points pertaining to the pair of the value at a location and the average of the surrounding locations. And as it turns out, as we saw, the slope of the linear fit through the scatter plot is Moran's eye. So we can see whether this slope is positive or negative, how steep it is, and so on. In addition, if we go away from the linear fit, we can use a local regression to look for possible structural breaks. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes in the presence of non-stationarity, when the spatial process is not stable throughout the data, we can find subsets of the data where there is strong spatial autocorrelation as well as subsets where there is hardly any. Or we can even find subsets where the sign of the spatial autocorrelation is different. All this would point to structural breaks or the presence of what we call spatial heterogeneity. So let's take a look at one of these scatter plots for our data on the um, Cleveland house prices. Uh, the first thing you see is that in the highlighted box 
there are several real extreme outliers and extreme in the following sense that there are more one is more than eight times the standard deviation away from the mean and on the lower end of the distribution that's much less the case so the graph is actually looks a little awkward with the values on the negative side really squished against the axis and to make it a little easier to interpret we're going to eliminate these outliers and as it turns out they are um, kind of in an industrial area in Cleveland and they uh, are really do not fit the rest of the distribution of the house sale values so we take them out and the resulting scatter plot is much easier to interpret so what do we see here we see on the horizontal axis the standardized value of the sales price standardized in the sense that the mean becomes zero and the standard deviation is one so the units on this axis are standard deviational units on the vertical axis is the spatial lag of each observation so the combination of the observation on the x-axis and its spatial lag on the y-axis is called the Moran scatter plot the linear fit through these points has a slope of 0.288534 as we see on the top of the graph this is a screenshot from Geoda so that's the first step the second step is that we can now start focusing on the four quadrants in this scatter plot when you see the dashed lines going through the center we can look at what it means for the points to be in each of these quadrants and if we look at the upper right and lower left so lower left and upper right these are points where values above the mean have neighbors or averages for the neighbors that are also above the mean or values that are below the mean that have neighbors that are also below the mean so this is evidence of positive spatial autocorrelation also as indicated by the slope of the line and these are clusters of like values in the sense that the locations are similar to their neighbors in the lower right and upper left the off diagonal elements if we uh, can put it that way we have evidence of negative autocorrelation in fact these are values that are above the mean surrounded by neighbors below the mean or values below the mean surrounded by neighbors above the mean and these we call spatial outliers these are locations that are very different from their neighbors now spatial outliers does not necessarily mean that they are outliers in a traditional sense it's outliers in the sense of relative to their neighbors so if you have a very high crime rate in a neighborhood surrounded by low crime neighborhoods that would be an outlier and the reverse as well uh, an enclave of very low crime surrounded by neighborhoods with very high crime so these spatial outliers are located in the lower right and upper left um, quadrant of the scatter plot and let's uh, take a clo closer look using our example so positive spatial autocorrelation is the what we call high high but high high is not in an absolute sense but relative to the mean on the on the graph on the left we see the points selected that are have their standardized values larger than zero and the spatial lags also larger than zero we call these high high low low is in the lower left quadrant these are values that are less than zero in standard deviational units and they are surrounded by neighbors that are also less than zero in standard deviational units so both of these quadrants suggest positive spatial autocorrelation however as such in this graph we don't know if this is significant or not that is yet to be determined but it does allow us to start thinking of 
spatial autocorrelation being decomposed in different parts of the data reflecting positive or negative spatial autocorrelation. Also, this graph illustrates very nicely the point I made in the previous discussion about the interpretation of Moran's eye. Moran's eye, in this case, is positive, and it's also significant, but we see that it consists of points that are both clusters, potential clusters of high values and potential clusters of low values. So, again, this emphasizes the fact that a, a positive spatial autocorrelation cannot be interpreted as either high or low, but it can be a mix of the two. Okay, then the other aspect, the other side of the coin, are, is negative spatial autocorrelation, or spatial outliers. On the graph on the left, high-low, we see that these values are positive in standard deviational units. They're above the mean, but their neighbors are below the mean. In the graph on the right, we have low-high. We have the opposite. We have values that are below zero, below the mean, surrounded by neighbors above the mean. So these locations are what we refer to spatial outliers. Again, there's no notion of significance here yet. That remains to be seen. And that's actually addressed when we look at local spatial autocorrelation. So the upshot of the Moran scatter plot is very simple. Moran's eye is the slope of a linear fit which we can visualize in a graph in a scatter plot that has the spatial lags on the vertical axis and the original variables on the horizontal axis. And because it's a scatter plot centered on zero, we can classify the nature of spatial autocorrelation by quadrant. We have high high and low low for positive spatial autocorrelation, high low and low high for negative spatial autocorrelation. Another aspect of the Moran scatter plot is that we don't have to stick with the linear fit. And this graph illustrates a, a local regression fit. It's referred to as a lowest smoother. This, um, in effect, is based on a bandwidth of values in the X range, X range that are used to estimate uh, the slope at a particular point. So at each point, the slope is estimated using a range, only a subset of the value in the data set, which allows you to assess whether or not the linear fit is a good representation of the data. And we see that in this case, there is actually some reason to believe that there might be some uh, structural break in that the beginning of the lowest curve is nice and positive, a little steeper than the linear fit, but then it seems to have some sort of a break and it becomes more horizontal and even slightly negative. Horizontal would mean no spatial autocorrelation. Slightly negative is, of course, negative spatial autocorrelation. Now, the way we use this in practice and how we're going to use it in, in the lab exercises is we would now uh, select these observations in the subset that corresponds to the break in the smoother and then see on the map where they are and then potentially also assess whether they correspond to particular values for other variables to try to start building hypotheses about the process of the, the process behind the pattern of spatial autocorrelation observed here. So Main things about the Moran scatter plot, it's a visual picture of Moran's eye. It allows you to decompose the global spatial autocorrelation into four subcategories, and it allows you, you through the lowest smoother, and parenthetically also, if you want to do uh, linking and brushing, it allows you to see, uh, put, identify potential structural breaks that would correspond to spatial heterogeneity. Next is the final discussion, uh, the treatment of a non-parametric spatial autocorrelation.